Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Happy May. Happy everything. A brief word about money before we start our Mother's Celebration. You'll notice in the bulletin that we've deemed May as our gift day, more of a gift month. Um, I do have the envelopes ready. This gift is just a little extra that every we ask, if you can, once a year, to give for Ebenezer. It supports our local ministries and lots of things. And the envelopes will be here. You could turn them in any time during the month of May, either here or to the office. Those listening over the uh, airwaves and Facebook, etc., you can contact the office to get one or they can tell you how you can make your donation. Thank you very much uh, on behalf of your church and have a great day. Good morning, everyone. We warmly welcome you for this worship service. May God continue to richly bless each of us. The notices are as printed in the bulletin. Please remember all the sick and sick and shut-in members of our church and any one that you know of that's ill. We want to especially give our condolences to the family of Ivor Simons, especially William and Charlene at this time. The BCMC Spiritual Growth Conference will be held on May the 8th the 19th to the 21st. Please take your bulletins home and read them and keep this in your prayers. The combined closing service will be held at Queen's College Auditorium on May the 23rd. Seating will be arranged to accommodate 300 persons. The conference will hybrid in person and virtual. Please remember those who are celebrating birthdays. They go to Alice Cash, Jackie Cash, Sid Capron, John Richard Culmer, who all celebrated their birthday this week. Jackie's, I think, is the 14th. Then can we sing happy birthday to them? want to ask for your prayers for Mrs. Iva Pender who has been admitted to hospital. On a little happier note, we want to congratulate Andrew Sweeting Jr. on his graduation from Texas Southern University. The flowers today are given by the Ladies Fellowship and also in celebration of Mrs. Alice Cash's birthday. We come to you now this morning. Good morning and welcome to our annual celebration of our Mother's Day service here at Ebenezer. If you are online, in person, again, we welcome you on this special day. Our mothers may be with us or elsewhere as we meet to celebrate, or she may be celebrating with a savior ahead of us. Regardless, let us today give thanks to God for all our mothers, sharing our love with her and making her feel extra special. Over and above everything else that we normally take time to worship our God, let us especially celebrate today as we share our gratitude with him for our mothers. So welcome and be encouraged as we all worship together here at Ebenezer. Can we please stand for the call to worship? As one whom a mother comforts, so I will comfort you. Can a mother forget the baby she nurses and have no compassion on the child she has birthed?
God is like a mother eagle hovering over her nest, overshadowing her young, then spreading her wings, lifting them in the air, and teaching them to fly. Explaining God, thank you for your protecting care. Amen. You can now see, we'll stand and sing Faith of Our Mother's Loving Still. We have it in the insert in your bulletin. the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into Hades on the third day he arose again from the dead Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
which Ms. Sancha Noble will come with a pastoral prayer. Morning, church. Happy Mother's Day to all. Let us pray. God of life and love, we give you thanks for this new day. On this day, we celebrate your love. We give you thanks for those who have given us life. Through the through, we call your father. Call you father. Let us not forget. How often mothers embody your steadfast and relentless love. We praise you, O oh God, for your great, for, for your gift of motherly love, both gentle and fair, both stead, strong and humble, both kind and true. For those mothers who join you in heaven and whom we've missed, daily this day, we give you thanks for mothers who work day and night to raise and care for their children we give you thanks for those who lost for those who lost along the way we give you thanks yet who are alone and need help we our church will be there for them for mothers who have lost a child to death and must carry on, we ask for your mercy. For new mothers, for women who have wanted to, be have, wanted to have children of, of their own, but did not, we give you thanks for them. For mothers who have mental problems, we pray for them, Lord, that you hold them in your loving arms. Be there for them. In your name, we lift all mothers who were mentioned and those left unmentioned as we join together in the prayer that you have taught us all how to say.
We will now have an offertory hymn. It's the insert in your bulletin, God of Women. It's sung to the tune of hymn 632, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord, My Heart. We will stand on the last verse, at which time Mrs. Karina Dorset will come with the offertory prayer. We give you these gifts today, knowing that you are the father of gifts. You mother us constantly, providing for us, caring for us. As we have been abundantly provided for, so we give you abundantly to the work that you give us to do, the work of the church, the care for those who are poor. Accept these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. now have um, this first scripture reading by Mrs. Deborah Knowles. Good morning, church. The first scripture lesson is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 13 to 17. I'm reading from the New International Version. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. 
Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will now be blessed with a selection by Dr. Linda Leifrin, and after that, we will ask for its, uh, the selection by Marily Giovanna Anasari.
Thank you, Dr. Lifron. And every time you play, we enjoy it more and more. Thank God for you. Now we'll ask Mrs. Tina Lockhart, Bo, Bo Lockhart, to come with a scripture lesson, after which then Marilee, Giovanna, and Asari will come to sing for you. Good morning. The scripture lesson is taken from the book of Mark, reading verses 13 through 16. Jesus blesses little children. Then they brought little children to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. He took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of the Lord. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never its power and it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and calls. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, and it reaches to the highest mountain. 
mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood, the blood that gives me strength, gives me strength from day to day it will never sublime eternal and then the next person to hope it will be Dr. Linda Lightman. <laughs>
Thank you for that beautiful singing. Wow, we must be an Ebenezer or something. <laughs> that is just beautiful, beautiful singing. What a beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, our aunties, our sisters, our cousins. And thank you for the service that has gone on before. What a delightful service it has already been. And today, I want to start with this little story. There was a new minister who took his walk from the back of the church with his beautiful sermon in hand. And um, he was arrogant. He was full of himself. He knew he had the best sermon that had ever been preached, ready to deliver on this particular Sunday morning. And on his way up, he stumbled and fell, and every single paper went in a different direction. And he made the cardinal mistake that you never make. He didn't put numbers on the bottom of his pages. And so he picked them up, and they were not in the right order. And so he delivered this sermon, and it was backwards and inside out and made no sense because the pages were not in order. And so he, when he walked down from this horrible, horrible, horrible experience, humiliated, just wishing that the ground would open up and swallow him and nobody would say a word to him, he said, he, he, he got down there and a little old lady said to him, Sonny, if you had gone up the way you came down, you would have come down the way you went up. I come before you in humility and feeling honored to share the word of God this morning. And I give honor to who is due, the leadership of this church, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share. And I have three things that I want to do. I want to tell you a story. I want to explain a song. And I want to give you affirmations that will keep you in good stead until Mother's Day next year. All through the lens of this wonderful woman, Hannah, in the Bible. Reverend Lightborn, dearly beloved, would you come and pray with me, please? If I would have prayed before the service this morning, there would be no need for Reverend to come up and pray for you this morning. <laughs> Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege of sharing your word together through the one who will be sharing with us in just a moment. We thank you, Father, for the sense of your presence with us in this worship experience already. And we pray that thou wilt use my dear wife as an instrument of blessing encouragement, inspiration, and grace. And we pray for the special impartation and ministry of the Holy Spirit upon her now as she shares. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you. Once upon a time, there was a brand new mother with a brand new baby boy. She bought herself a rocking chair and put it in the nursery. And when he was really asleep, she would rock him back and forth and sing him this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, he's growing, he's two now, and he's going through the worst case of terrible twos known to mankind. And he suffocated his stuffed animal, and he got a hold of his mother's gold ring and flushed it down the toilet. He grabbed the toilet paper and ran through the house with it. Mother was frustrated. 
But when he was really asleep, she would pick up this two-year-old terrible toddler, rock him in her rocking chair, and sing him this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, now he's nine, and he's in school, and school isn't going very well, and he can't sit still in his classroom, and he spends more time in the principal's office than he does in the classroom. But at nighttime, when he's really asleep, his mother will pick up this nine-year-old boy, rock him in her rocking chair, and sing him this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Well, he's a teenager, and I don't have to tell you what all things teenagers go through, but you know, he wasn't, he wasn't the best teenager, he wasn't the best student, and he had an identity crisis, and his feet were too big, and his, his height was up, it was where he didn't know where it was, and, but at nighttime, when he was really asleep, his mama would pick up this teenager, rock him in her rocking chair, and sing him this song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, he didn't get any kind of grades that would have got him any kind of scholarship. But he did go to college. And guess who paid? <laughs> Mama paid for everything. But he found his niche. He found his niche in college. He's good at computer programming, and he loved the COBOL language and the C Java and the Java language, and he did very good at it, and he graduated. He got a good job programming computers, a really good job, and so, and so he was able to buy himself a house across town. He bought himself a nice car. Mama was still driving the old jalopy that she bought before he, before he went to college and spent off all her money. But she, he, he was on the other side of town. But she would get real lonely for him. And so she would drive across her town in her little old jalopy, get to her son's house, somehow climb up a ladder into the bedroom of the open, in the open window, get to where her son was. Well, she couldn't lift him up anymore, but she sure did try. But she would sing him this song, I love you forever. I like you forever. I'll love you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, time went on, and as life does to us, she was a lot more feeble. And she called her son and asked him to come see her. And he did. He was willing to do that. And she tried to sing the song, but the words just weren't coming out. And so this loving son, grateful for all that his mother had done for him, picked up his little mama, sat her in her rocking chair, and sang her this song. I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy you'll be. And he rocked her, and he rocked her until she was good and asleep. Put her back in her bed. Made her house safe. Went home to his house, where he had a three-month-old little girl picked her up out of her crib, sat in the rocking chair that he bought, and sang her this song. I'll love you forever. You know it now. Sing it. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. And as all good stories end, 
they lived happily ever after. <laughs> the story is an important one because Hannah in the Bible couldn't have children. She wanted children. The other wife could have child after child after child, baby after baby, and she couldn't have any children. And Penina, the other wife, gave her a really hard time, ridiculed her, put more pain in her heart than should be in somebody's heart. And then when she went to the temple that one time, she was pouring her very sad heart out unto the Lord. And the priest thought she was drunk. Many times, as mothers, grandmothers, as women, when we are at our best, pouring our heart out unto the God, Lord, we are misunderstood. We are misrepresented. Our words can be devalued. They thought she was drunk, the priest. Not, the man of God thought she was drunk. No, she said, no, I'm not drunk. I am a handmaiden of the Lord whose heart is breaking. I have had no wine. I have had no beer. I am just very sad, and I would want God to answer my prayer this day. Eli, trying to redeem himself, said, may the Lord grant you your request. And her request indeed was granted. In fact, it was abundantly granted because she had five more babies after Samuel. She took Samuel to the, to the temple, left him there, and she had five more, two more daughters and three more sons after that. Samuel, her firstborn, stayed in the temple. I told you perhaps I was going to share with you a song, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sing the song. I want to read it to you. Shirley Caesar sang this song many years ago. It's called No Charge. You know that song? Remember that song? Well, I've, I've, I've um, gone for it inflation. I've, I've taken inflation into consideration, okay? So Shirley Caesar says um, her, son, this boy, her son came and gave her a list of the things that she owed him for. He said, mowing the lawn. She said $5, but these days it's $20 for the lawn to be mowed. So mowing the lawn, $20. Making my bed, $10. Taking out the trash, $10. Feeding the dog, $10. Putting my dirty clothes in the clothes hamper, $20. Getting one A on my report card, just one, one A on my report card, $20. Cleaning up the kitchen, $30. Total charge, $120. Mother, in her wisdom, turned the paper over and said, Carrying you for nine months. Hmm. I couldn't see my feet. I could see my rumpus buttocus. My nose was too big. My ears had a life of their own. No charge. Getting up with you multiple nights. Time, times a night for two years. How much is that going to cost? No charge. Getting up, um, nursing you back to health when you were sick. No charge. Wiping your nose. No charge. Teaching you how to read and write and tie your shoelaces so you could go to school. No charge. All the clothes I bought you, what did she say? No charge. 
all the sports gear I brought you. Paying for your schooling at QC for 13 years. Paying for your college and your university. All the scrumptious meals that you wolfed down as if it was the last meal that you were ever going to have. And each of those meals would have cost you $70 at Cafe Matisse. And I'm saying to you, no charge. No charge. Our words matter. We have the amazing privilege of, of speaking life into our children regardless of their age. Sometimes we speak with our eyes. Sometimes we speak with a hug. Sometimes we say words that help to stop them dead in their track. Like, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Amen. We can speak life into our children. Hannah spoke life into her son, Samuel. In fact, such is the life that she spoke into Samuel that King David quoted Hannah. Hannah said in her song, in her prayer, she said, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap and sets them among princes. King David in Psalm 113 said, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap and sets them among princes. Hannah said, the Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. Two generations later, King Solomon said, there's a time to be born and a time to die. Many centuries later, Mary opened her Magnificat with the same words as Hannah had used way back in the Old Testament. My heart rejoices in the Lord. Hannah said, very little to Penina when Penina was giving her a hard time. But sometimes we have, Hannah defended herself. And she had de defended herself at the time when she spoke to Eli. Hannah knew the pain of sorrow, and we know the pain of sorrow. Generations of her children quoted her and looked back on her as a loving, warm, and gracious gift from God. We know the pain of sorrow, and indeed, many will look on us with graciousness, loving, warm, and gracious gift from God. She was blessed and highly favored, and we are blessed and highly favored. I used to look at Proverbs 31 as a standard by which I could not live. I could not keep up with that. And don't let my husband talk about preaching from Proverbs 31 on Mother's Day because that, was just, that would just hurt my heart. I, I can't live up to that. I cannot live up to it. Or at least I thought I could not live up to it. But then... I turned, I had, a come to, I had a come to Jesus moment. You know, you know when you have a, a real revelation, you, you know that somehow you've got to change your mind about something. So I was looking at Proverbs 31 and looking at it quite differently. Because what happens, if you, if you say she is clothed in strength and dignity, you say, I can't live up to that. But if you turn it into an affirmation, I am clothed in strength and dignity, then my spiritual work is to figure out what that looks like. That becomes my, my devotions. That becomes my devotional. That becomes my, my service to God. How do, what do I look like when I am clothed in strength and dignity? So... I'm going to give us some affirmations 
from Proverbs 31 that will hold us over, I am sure, until Mother's Day next year. Is that okay? Are you with me? All right. All right, here we go. Because your children rise up and call you blessed, you are clothed in strength and dignity. Your children rise up and call you blessed because you can laugh at the days to come for you have looked to the ways of your household. Your children rise up and call you blessed because you speak with wisdom. Your children rise up and call you blessed because your faithful instruction is on your tongue. You, your children rise up and call you blessed because the law of kindness is upon your tongue. Your children will rise up and call you blessed because you are held in the palm of the hand of God our Savior. Your children rise up and call you blessed because you are walking in the light of God. And I tell you, the pain that we've been, the pain in our heart from this situation and that situation that have caused us to, our soul to resemble a piece of Swiss cheese, the cheese with the holes in it. You know that cheese? It's got holes all in it, random holes. The pain I want to tell you today that those holes in your soul is where the light of God Almighty shines through. That light that comes through gives you the ability to walk one more step. That light helps you to get through one more day. That light helps you to go forward and that light gives light to others in your, in your sphere of influence. Your children will rise and call you blessed because you have served this present generation. Your husband also will rise up and say, many daughters have done well, but you and you and you, and you, and you, and you, and you have exceeded them all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to thank Dr. Leiprin for that inspiring message, and I hope we can all remember all what you said by this time next year. <laughs> hope we're all around for then. But before I call uh, for the presentation, I want to say thank you to everyone that took part and did such a wonderful job, and I want to congratulate and thank the Decorating Committee for the Church So Lovely for Mother's Day. I know it took a lot of hard work and dedication on the part of the people because everybody has their things to do. But thank you very much to the team. And we ask Wendy, Paulette, and Reverend Lyprin to come forth at this time to do the presentations. Thank you, everyone.
Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Last year we were in lockdown. But this year, yeah, we're happy to be able to resume honoring our special mothers of Ebenezer who give service Sunday after Sunday and in between. So this first honoree attended Ebenezer as a child. She was christened and confirmed in Ebenezer and attended youth group. Like many youth and strong adults, she wandered away from her church but later returned. She is actively involved in the life of the church. She serves on the usher board. She's a member of the Ladies Fellowship. She serves on the executive board of the Regional Ladies Fellowship. She's a leader in the Scout Association. She's a vital member of Focus Family. She assists with meals at the Naomi Christie Home. She operates a stall at the Christmas Fair. She's a regular attendee at Bible study. She's an ardent supporter of the activities of the church. This dynamic, amiable, and sometimes tempestuous personality <laughs> is the mother of three sons and the proud grandmother of two grandsons and one granddaughter. We honor the unforgettable Miss Deborah Knowles. <laughs> Okay. Our next honoree has worshiped here at Ebenezer all her life. She is a former graduate of Queens College. She willingly uses her gifts and talents in our worship services and blesses our services with her special renditions. She assists at the church fair and makes some of the favorite delicacies sold there. She is out, she's an outstanding mother and prepares her children well for any activity they are involved in. This loving and devoted wife is the exemplary mother of three lovely daughters. It is a pleasure to honor the lovely and talented Mrs. Karina Dorset. <laughs> Our next honoree has been a member of Ebenezer for decades. She is a former graduate of Queens College also. 
She was an outstanding career civil servant for over four decades. She is a supportive, dedicated, and committed member of our church. She serves on the usher board. She assists with the soup kitchen. She is a member of the Ladies Fellowship and has served on the executive with distinction for many years. She is a member of the Regional Ladies Fellowship. She has been, been involved for many years with national children's organizations and is the adopted Grammy to many. This well-traveled lady is the loving mother of two daughters and two sons and the adoring grandmother to three granddaughters and five grandsons. It is a joy to pay tribute to this quick-witted, endearing, and amiable lady, Mrs. Charlene Newbold. <laughs> now, Charlene is not with us, but her daughter, Sancho, is coming to get her flowers. Charlie don't get her flowers when she comes back to church. This next presentation is a special presentation. She is a loving, supportive, and protective wife. She is an exemplary mother and a doting grandmother. She graciously and willingly uses her gifts and talents in the music ministry, playing the organ and the piano, singing, teaching music. She revitalized the handbell group. She is a vital part of the communications board and assists with sharing the worship services via social media. She shares delightful Sunday school lessons weekly via social media. Today, we thank you for your service to God and Ebenezer, Dr. Linda Lightbourne. <laughs> Our final and very special tribute is to an icon of our church and our Methodist community. It is with sadness that we pay tribute to this phenomenal lady, but we had planned a tribute to her before this week, all for her significant contributions. We would be remiss as we honor mothers today for their service not to recognize hers. On Tuesday past, she was not just the oldest female in the church, but at age 98, was the oldest member of our church. But on Wednesday, God called her home, and she transitioned from time to eternity. We are deeply grateful for her legacy of service. She was a pioneer. She was one of the original organizers of the soup kitchen, she was a starting member of the Ladies' Fellowship. She was one of the first ushers to serve this congregation. She was a member of the Focus family. She made macaroni and cheese for the home cookery stall at the church fair for many, many years. She is renowned for her long and dedicated service as a brownie owl, and later as assistant district commissioner of the Eastern District. She served as Girl Guides captain for many years. 
We are deeply grateful for the life and legacy of this staunch Methodist, Mrs. Iva Simons. We are grateful for her meritorious service to our church and community. On behalf of the mothers and ladies, we extend heartfelt sympathy to Charlene, William, and the Simon family. May her soul rest in peace. I guess Revel delivered these flowers them later this week or sometime when you go to visit her. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so very much, ladies, for an excellent job this morning. We do appreciate your leadership and your ministry. And I am totally convinced that Ebenezer Methodist Church has some of the greatest mothers and ladies on the planet. Give yourselves a hand. And I think that was definitely revealed this morning. Now, we have a special gift for all the ladies who are here this morning, a special Ebenezer Methodist pin, which was crafted and made by Mr. Josh Burrows. And we want you to make sure that you receive one before leaving this morning. It's a small expression and token of our love and appreciation to you. So all the ladies, please make sure that you receive one before you depart this morning. And again, we thank all the mothers for having led us in our time of worship today. A real blessing and an inspiration. And I want to add to the names that have been mentioned two other ladies, Mrs. Karen Pinder and Mrs. Michelle Ryan, who have been doing a yeoman's work as they have been working on the property of the church. And you may have noticed the changes that are taking place around here at Abneer. So we do appreciate the leadership that these mothering ladies provide to Ebenezer Methodist Church. Thank you. Great job. Okay, I'm going to ask you just to Hold for a moment as we have our prayer for the mothers and as we have our final hymn, you can continue to distribute them. Please join me as we pray. God must have known the world would need a gentle, loving touch when he created mother's love that warms our hearts so much. Of all the special joys of life, the big ones and the small, a mother's love and tenderness is the greatest of them all. Compassionate and loving God, on this day set aside to honor and remember mothers, we thank you for our mothers, those who are mothers through the gift of nature, and those who are mothers through their nurturing gift of love. We thank you for the mothers here at Ebenezer Methodist Church, the island of Nassau, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and indeed mothers throughout the world. We are grateful you chose to give us life through them and that they receive the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifice they have made in caring us and giving us birth. We are grateful for those who raised us, who helped us, fed us, who cared for us, and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us. 
and they would be pleased to be called our mothers. We pray this morning for older mothers whose children are now grown and gone. May they have joy and satisfaction for a job well done and a reward for their love. Remind them, loving Father, that they have not been forgotten. We pray for new mothers experiencing changes they could not predict and are having to get used to a new way of life. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you for the future. We pray for expectant women who will soon be mothers, perhaps for the first time. Grant them patience and strength for the coming months as they prepare to welcome their children as priceless gifts from your hand. We pray for mothers who face the demands of single parenthood, who seek to fulfill the roles of provider, protector, teacher, leader, nurturer, prayer, and house builder. In this new normal, Grant them your strength, wisdom, encouragement, guidance, and endurance. Assure them of your unchanging presence in their lives. We pray for mothers whose families have been impacted and affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Their husbands may have lost their employment and they have had to shoulder the responsibilities of caring for their families in this challenging time. Strengthen them for the tasks placed upon them and help their families to be grateful for and appreciate the contributions they are making. We pray for those mothers who have become caregivers to other family members. We are grateful for their loyalty and the loving care they provide for those now under their care within the home. Renew their strength from day to day as they serve with love, commitment, and perseverance even at times, Lord, when they are physically tired and exhausted. Bless them this morning. And may they know your all-sufficient grace in their lives. And we pray for mothers experiencing physical pain, sometimes unbearable, and day after day, they're able to face life and do life and continue to serve as mothers and wives. Oh God, this morning, may they know your healing grace and your restoring touch in their lives. We pray for mothers who have known and experienced sorrow over recent loss, be it a parent, a spouse, a child, a sibling, or a close family member. Grant them your comfort and consolation. May they feel the nearness of your presence, especially on this Mother's Day. And as we conclude, we pray now for all women, all mothers. Grant them joy and fulfillment, strength and grace as they continue to fulfill their roles and responsibilities. We pray your blessings now upon all the mothers who are among us this special Mother's Day. Grant them your protection, your strength, your power, and all that they stand in need of 
this day and in the days ahead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. O God of all creation, on whom our world depends, to you let praise be given for families and friends. We conclude our worship now as we sing this wonderful hymn to the tune of O Jesus, I Have Promised. Surround you and your family as you go to face another day, another week, another month, and another year. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God who has mothered us through all of our years, be with you and remain with you all, especially you mothers, this day and forevermore. 
And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.